Well, good morning. Um, the Senate Armed Services Committee meets this morning to receive testimony on information surrounding the unfortunate matter of the Marines United Facebook group. I want to thank each of our witnesses for appearing before the committee this morning. Acting Secretary of the Navy, Sean Stackley, General Robert Neller, Commandant of the Marine Corps, and Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Ronald Green. So Sergeant Major, good morning, and thank you for coming. Thank you for your appearance here. The thank committee you, is saddened and disturbed by allegations that female Marines have been subjected to online harassment and abuse, including denigrating comments and non-consensual sharing of images, apparently in some cases by fellow Marines. Our witnesses are here to inform us about these allegations and what is being done to address the impact on the service, especially those Marines who have been victimized. All who love the Marine Corps are embarrassed and outraged by these allegations, none more so than our witnesses today. General Neller, since these allegations were made, you have been unequivocal in communicating to the men and women you lead that behavior like this is unacceptable and fundamentally opposed to the values of the Marine Corps. I want to reemphasize the Commandant's message to Marines last week. The members of this committee share your hope that Marines who have been victims of harassment and abuse will report that conduct to their chain of command, chaplain, or victim leader counsel. It is our expectation that Marine officers and leaders will support those victims protect them from reprisal, and do all in their power to prevent abuse of any Marine. At this time, we don't know how many Marines were involved in these allegations of harassment and abuse, or what motivated those who were to, to engage in such disgraceful and unprofessional behavior. We do not know the origin of images of female Marines on the Marines United Facebook group, some of which may have been taken or shared without their consent and we do not know how many Marines may have been targeted. This committee expects the Department of the Navy and its senior Marine Corps leaders to provide, up, to provide updates on the investigation into these issues when appropriate, as well as keep the committee apprised of any corrective action the Marine Corps may take concerning policies, procedures, and the education and training of Marines. We realize that much of this information may be law enforcement sensitive due to ongoing criminal investigations. For that reason, immediately following this open hearing, the committee will proceed to a closed door session and to hear from our witnesses on these sensitive matters. While there may be much that we still have to learn, there's much that we know already. We know that the actions of those Marines involved in Marines United do not reflect the culture and values of their service, not only honor, courage, and commitment, but also mutual respect for all of their fellow human beings, values that are upheld and lived each day by the overwhelming majority of Marines. That is why Americans are proud of our Marine Corps, because the conduct of most Marines is deserving of our praise and respect. We also know that challenges we see in our military often reflect similar challenges confronting broader society. In this case, we are all confronting the unique challenges posed by the advent and proliferation of social media, which like any technology, is an enabler. An enabler of incredibly good and decent things, but also dark and troubling things. The same technology that allows one group of Marines to create a support group to help their battle buddies struggling with post-traumatic stress can be used by another group to humiliate and demean their fellow female comrades. At the same time, we know that those who serve in the profession of arms must be held to a higher standard. They would not want it any other way. We know that the Marine Corps cannot fight and win the nation's wars if Marines do not respect and trust one another. 
This is not just a matter of good personal conduct. It's a matter of military effectiveness. That's why any Marine who disrespects a fellow Marine dishonors the values of the Marine Corps and harms its witness, its mission to defend the nation. This kind of behavior is unacceptable for any Marine or any member of the United States Armed Forces. And the actions of our civilian and military leadership, not just in response to these allegations, but at all times, must demonstrate that such misconduct will not be excused or tolerated. Finally, as members of the committee are aware, these allegations surrounding Marine United are currently under investigation by the Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Therefore, I encourage members of the committee to please reserve any questions that may be law enforcement sensitive for the closed session to follow. I do not want this committee's proceedings to be construed in any way that might interfere with the swift delivery of justice to those individuals that may have engaged in criminal behavior. Once again, I thank the witnesses for appearing before the committee today. Senator Reid. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, for holding this very important session to give the Marine Corps the opportunity to give an initial briefing on what they know and what they don't know uh, about reports of abhorrent behavior by some of our Marines using the Marine United website. It is unusual for the committee to receive a briefing like this one on an ongoing criminal investigation, but this issue is so important that it warrants this kind of attention. However, we must take care to ensure that we do, don't put the Commandant of the Marine Corps in the position of making statements that later could be alleged as exercising unlawful command influence and therefore disrupting the criminal investigation. The non-consensual posting of explicit photos of female Marines on a public website is repugnant and just plain wrong and inexcusable. All of us who have had the privilege of serving in uniform know the value of a cohesive unit where all members of the unit looked out for each other and took care of each other. I can only imagine the harm that this type of behavior can have on morale and unit cohesion. Our service members must have confidence that their fellow service members always have their back. There simply is no room for behavior that humiliates and degrades a fellow service member. In my view, the Marine Corps must and will attack this problem with the vigor that the Marine Corps has demonstrated time and time again. It should begin with a good, thorough investigation to establish provable facts that can be used to hold offenders accountable for criminal conduct. I will be anxious to hear whether the NCIS has the resources and expertise to fully and completely investigate this matter. If they don't, we need to help them get those resources and that expertise. Once the investigation is complete, commanders will have the task of taking appropriate action based on the findings of the investigation. Aside from the immediate issue of Marine misconduct on the Marine United website, the Marine Corps must also address the culture that allowed or facilitated that misconduct. I'll be interested in hearing about actions the Marine Corps will take to improve the culture, especially in a Marine Corps that is in the process of fully integrating female Marines into its ranks. With that, Mr. Chairman, I look forward to our briefings, both the open and closed sessions. Thank you. Thank you. We'll begin, begin with you, Secretary Stackley. Welcome. Chairman McCain, Ranking Member Reed, members of the Armed Services Committee, thank you for this hearing. Discovery and investigation these past several weeks into the toxic, predatory behavior harbored by the website Marines United has uncovered a grievous breakdown of good order and discipline, a violation of our core values, and what amounts to an insider threat. Some unknown number of Marines or former Marines who in denigrating their fellow Marines undermine the very honor and integrity and unit cohesion that has long underpinned the strength of the Corps. Marines United is a bell ringer. Beyond the emotions that surround this issue, anger, revulsion, frustration, we are committed, dedicated to fixing this issue and our immediate actions are threefold. First, we must take care of those Marines who have been victimized by this behavior counseling, legal services, and beyond, in strict confidence, inside and outside the chain of command, every resource will be made available to those seeking support. We will prosecute the matter of Marines United to the full extent of our abilities, and we will hold accountable those who have violated the standards borne by law, by policy, 
by code. Of the 30,000 members reported to be on Marines United, we do not know how many are in fact active duty Marines, much less how many in fact participated in this denigrating affair. Getting to the facts will take time, but the Navy Criminal Investigative Service is working every lead, every path available to overcome the challenges we are running into posed by nameless, faceless predators and cyberbullying on social media. Perhaps most importantly, we will get at the root underlying issues in order to eradicate this cancer. The task force formed by the Commandant is central to this effort, which today involves senior officers and enlisted. We'll expand to include the expertise called upon by this problem and in the long run will involve commitment by every tier of leadership within the Marine Corps. This again will be a long road, but we are on the road for good and we will share with the committee our efforts, our course, our progress on that course as we move forward. Every young man and woman who takes the oath to support and defend our Constitution, who puts on the uniform and puts their life on the line to defend our way of life here at home, is owed utmost trust and respect by every American. Any breach of that trust and respect within the very ranks of the services themselves must be dealt with immediately, decisively, unceasingly, before, like a cancer, it steals from us our strength, our spirit, our honor. We will be immediate, decisive, and unceasing in fixing this problem and in defeating this attack on our core values. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to addressing your questions. Thank you, General Neller. Uh, Chairman McCain, Ranking Member Reed, Senators of the Committee. Normally, I appear before this committee to take an opportunity to tell you about the extraordinary actions and things your Marines are doing at home and around the globe. Today, however, is different. Um, I'm here to discuss the details of some truly disturbing and unacceptable actions that have allegedly been committed on social media, primarily against the women of our Marine Corps. The recent release of information first uncovered by a combat wounded Marine reporter about the online posting of explicit and lewd pictures and an even more troubling derogatory demeaning, in some cases, sexually violent comments about female Marines uh, are why we're here and, and what we're going to talk about. Such actions pervert our culture and bring me here. As I'm sure you did, I received this recent news regarding actions on the Marines United Facebook site with a mixture of emotions, disappointment, shock, anger, disgust, and outrage. The Marine Corps I've served for over 40 years has a problem, and we intend to fix it. I've struggled with labeling the problem we face. Some say we have a problem with our culture. Some say it's an insider threat. My natural inclination is to resist this because I believe in my heart the Marine Corps culture is based on our core values of honor, courage, and commitment. It represents who we are, the online behavior of some individuals, whether they're currently serving Marines, former Marines, or others who simply wandered in have attacked our Marine Corps values, our ethos. We draw our strength from the team. Everything we do in training from day one is focused on the team and not the individual. But some seem to have forgotten that every member of our team is an equal and a value member of our Corps. Every Marine has a role to play. Every Marine who earns our title commands the respect of their fellow Marines. We proudly advertise the transformation that occurs at recruit training and officer candidate school. First, by the methods by which we recruit, train, and transform young men and women from citizens to Marines. But the transformation isn't perfect in all cases. Some Marines can lose their way and disregard or fail to comprehend our ethos. At every level of leadership, we must do a better job of sustaining this transformation and eliminating any behavior that targets any individual as less than a teammate or a fellow Marine. We must attack any behavior that has a corrosive effect on good order and discipline of our Corps. I came into the Marine Corps with the problems of the 70s, uh, shortly after Vietnam. Drug use and race relations were tearing us apart. Some of you were there then and you remember this. Our commandant at the time, General Lewis Wilson, took a firm stance to get our Corps back to True North. He improved our recruiting standards and made it his personal mission to address those who can't or don't want to measure up to our standards needed to find another place to perform. I believe we face a similar situation today. The vast majority of Marines past and present are American citizens who are good and decent people. 
They are as upset by the behavior represented on Marines United as you and I. And I'm calling on all Marines to take a stand against this destructive combat, conduct, to take a stand and support and respect every Marine, to demonstrate to the American people who we really are, that we embody our ethos of honor, courage, and commitment. When any Marine unit goes into action, there are never bystanders. We all have a role to play. We all have to be fully committed to the mission. The same is true in garrison, in the barracks, back here at home. There can be no bystanders. We must all be engaged as teammates. Every Marine has a role to play to ensure that our team remains strong. Uh, I would ask to take this opportunity to speak directly to every female in our Marine Corps, past and present. I know I'm asking a lot of you right now, but I ask you to trust the leadership of the Marine Corps to take action and correct this problem. I ask you to trust me personally as your Commandant. And when I say I'm outraged that many of you haven't been given the same respect when you earn the title Marine. I know you aren't asking to be labeled as victims, for anyone's pity, I know you would find that as insulting as the recent behavior and comments on social media. I know what you do for our Corps, for our team, and what you've contributed to include during the past 16 years of combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. I know when you earn the Eagle Globe and anchor, you wear it as proudly as the Marines you are. To the men in our Corps, serving today, and those who no longer wear the uniform, you're still Marines. I need you to ask yourselves, how much more do the females of our Corps have to do to be accepted? Was it enough when Major Megan McClung was killed by an IED in Ramadi, or Captain Jennifer Harris killed when her helicopter was shot down while she was flying blood from Baghdad to Fallujah Surgical, or Corporals Jennifer Parcell and Hal Ann Sherrod and Ramona, Ramona Valdez all killed by the hands of our enemies? What is it going to take for you to accept these Marines as Marines? I'm committed to making this right, and I need all Marines equally committed. We all have to commit to getting rid of this perversion to our culture. Enough is enough. So ladies and gentlemen of the committee, um, we'll take action to correct this stain on our Marine Corps. Um, I have no illusions or delusions about how difficult that will be, but that doesn't mean we're going to stand by and watch it. It, it. it can't go on anymore, and I'm prepared to answer your questions. General Nelly, I want to, Neller, I want to thank you for that uh, statement. I think it's strong and it's powerful, and uh, frankly, it's reassuring to this committee about your commitment. Sergeant Major Green, do you have any comments to add to the Commandant's remarks? Good morning, Chairman uh, Senator McCain, our Ranking Member Senator Reed, and all members of the Congress. I want to thank you all for allowing the Marine Corps to come before you today the leadership, and explain exactly what we're doing. I didn't prepare any words, but I can tell you that no one's more outraged than the leadership you see sitting before you today. This tears at the very fibers that bond us together as we fight for the nation's freedom and liberty. We're protecting our, our victims. We're allowing the legal system to go forward so that we can bring those who have committed these crimes before the commandant, the leadership, and hold them accountable. We're researching our policies and reinforcing the gaps. And I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to protect not just the enlisted Marines, but all Marines and their dependents and those who serve on the Eagle Global Anchor. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you, sir, and thank you for your outstanding leadership. General Neller, uh, as the Marine Corps embarked on an effort to communicate with and assist identifiable veteran uh, victims sir as far as the Marines United um, there have been a number of a small number of uh, victims or people who have claimed that they were targeted by this website and so uh, we're talking to those and uh, NCIS is is working investigations on those that they're aware of but the number is too small and again we need others to come forward and what are you doing to encourage others to come forward, General? This hearing is an opportunity to ask Marines to come forward, not just Marines that may have been victimized, but Marines that have been aware of this. And I think that's starting to happen. We're getting uh, information from others, um, from other men, other male Marines, that they know about this and that 
that the, they are, as I stated, I believe is as upset about this as, as, as we are. Um, we had a press conference the other day where, again, I asked Marines uh, for their help. Um, we did a, we've gone out to the leadership, uh, told them the path that, uh, where they can direct Marines. I've, asked, I've directed commanders to go out and talk to their Marines about this and directed them that if anyone comes forward, they can be directed toward their, uh, their, their, victim, their victim advocate, to their chaplain, to their victim legal counsel, or the chain of command, and they're going to forward this. We put a site up on our marines.mil webpage. If you're aware of any actions of this where someone's being bullied or harassed in cyberspace, to contact this uh, a certain number or an email address or their chain of command, I know NCIS has done the same. So we're, we've gone out in any possible form that we can to ask Marines to come forward if they're either a victim here or they're witting of any of this behavior. And you are assuring them that there would be no reprisal or retaliation? They have my word that, that the leadership will not take retribution against them. And I know that's a big issue. And I've talked to some of the members here about that. Um, that's why I know it's difficult, because I can't necessarily guarantee. Social media, the problem that one of the insidious natures of this problem is, is there's a certain level of anonymity out there. And so if you were to, to push back uh, on any of this, you immediately get attacked by the crowd and they're anonymous. Um, I think for many of us who don't participate in that type of behavior, that's foreign to us. And I'll, be, I'll admit, you know, this... Uh, this is something that, you know, I, I am not a social media person. We use it to message Marines and talk about the good things that Marines do. But sites like this are uh, not a place that I would think any of us would frequent. Even for the, even the altruistic and positive things, as you mentioned, Chairman, that Marines United was set up to do, help veterans deal with whatever issues they had coming back from the fight. So... There is risk. I, I'm, I, can't, I can't protect people necessarily on social media. I can ensure that the chain of command is going to take action, and I can direct commanders to take all these, uh, any allegations or anybody makes, uh, and they're going to take them and follow them through or report them to NCIS or do an investigation. Um, but our ability to, to, and this is not an excuse, um, our ability to manage what happens on social media if it remains up uh, is an issue. I will say, though, that when we have seen this type of behavior and we've gone to the, the organizations that host this, they have, in, in general, been very helpful with us with taking these sites down. But when they do that, they, what we've also seen is then they move. They move. And they're also, and I would, like, we can, I would prefer to get into it in the closed discussion about what the legalities are about certain things that, that happen on, in cyberspace, because... Uh, the law, um, there are certain things about the law that are not always going to be helpful to us getting accountability. Again, that's not an excuse, but I think uh, there's some things that we may need your help with. I agree. Secretary Stackley, uh, can commanders use the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice, to hold personnel accountable for transmitting, receiving, viewing, possessing photos without the consent of the person, in your view? Uh, yes, sir. And now what we're trying to do is uh, actually run to ground each instance, each example that we can find where we have the perpetrator, we have the uh, uh, evidence that, frankly, has been preserved so that we can hold them accountable in accordance with Articles 120 and 134 of the UCMJ. And obviously, General Neller pointed out one of the challenges we face, and that is of these websites just morphing over to another site after they're shut down. Yes, sir. It's, uh, I use the term nameless, faceless. It's very difficult to identify the individuals that are on these websites. And as we work with um, uh, the owners of the websites, we have to deal with First Amendment rights. We have to deal with Privacy Act issues. Uh, so we're pushing it as far as we can to get every piece of evidence that we can find. And a key to this, as the Commandant described, is to have individuals come forward. So we're trying to reach out, not just uh, uh, get the word out for people to come forward, but also provide an environment where they feel safe and secure to bring their case forward. 
Senator Reid. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I'd just like to ask one question because I know there's great interest in my colleagues in the public session, and then we have a closed section uh, later. Uh, General Nell, this is not the first uh, experience recently the Marine Corps has had. In 2013, there was a uh, cyberbullying of female Marines. Uh, how did you react to that? issue and what lessons have you learned and how are you applying those lessons to this situation? You know, Senator, we went back and looked at that and looked at all the actions and I can give you a long list of things that we did um, as far as addressing sexual assault, um, changing uh, um, values-based training at all our entry, all our different levels of training. Um, there was a policy written about conduct on social media in 2010 but it, was, it wasn't focused on this type of thing. We're in the process of actually issuing out today an updated policy on how to, on conduct on social media and what is uh, acceptable and not acceptable and what is, what is a violation of a lawful order or Article 134 or Article 120C. Um, so there was a lot of training that we did, but I, looking back at it, I don't know if, I mean, I can only speak for myself, Senator. Um, we were focused on the issues of sexual assault, which were very important at that time. And I don't think we got at the social media thing to the level that we're going to get at it now. I, and I'm, I put myself in that category. I, I went back and I thought about all the stuff we talked about and all the things that the Commandant General Amos did with the Heritage Brief, about our values, about how we treat each other, uh, the things we've done since about... Uh, discussing alcohol abuse and protect what you've earned and even the message I put out after the first of this year stating we need to treat each other better. But when I wrote that, I, I wasn't, I didn't have in my mind this particular, and so, um, so I, I have no excuse for that. I mean, there are, we are dealing with a lot of things and that itself, but uh, so now this is front and center. And, and I think part of it is I think victims were afraid to come forward because if they came forward, they were going to be attacked tenfold on social media again. And I think for those that don't participate in this domain, I, I don't think we, I think we're ignorant. Okay. I'm not ignorant anymore. All right, I'm a train, I'm trainable. And, and I accept responsibility for that. But we were focused on other things that we were trying to get at. Um, and I don't think social media was absent from that, but I don't think it got front and center like it should have at the time. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I think we all recognize that uh, the seriousness of this issue, it goes to the very heart of the, the core, now, not just the Marine Corps, but every service. You, you can't have uh, individual Marines, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Coast Guardsmen who are marginalized because of gender or any other characteristic. So uh, we have a lot of work to do, both you and the United States Congress. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General uh, Neller, the first quote that I heard from you was that those who are involved will be held accountable. Um, I know your background. I know you. I have every confidence that is what's going to happen. I have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Secretary Stackley, a November 2015 report from the Government Accountability Office found the Department of Defense measures to assess the effectiveness of its sexual assault prevention efforts were not fully developed and missing key attributes. Can you tell me if anything has been done since that GAO report to address that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, and can you tell me specifically what? Okay, there are a list of initiatives that have gone out in terms of first identifying cases of sexual assault. And this gets right down to everything from uh, anonymous surveys uh, to interviews uh, to capturing reports and then running reports to ground. I, I, uh, I, I could provide uh, examples of things that have been done, but uh, when we look at the statistics and the results, what we're trying to do is correlate measures that were taken with results that we're getting. And, and frankly, uh, we're, we're challenged to do that. 
the statistics uh, the statistics move around and uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to per, uh, within the Department of the Navy I'm trying to within our uh, our uh, SAPRO trying to correlate what actions are we taking that are giving us positive results that we have confidence in so in fact we can grow those actions uh, versus a number of initiatives that we can't quite correlate to the results that we're looking for. Well, I would argue that one of the challenges is that people are not being held accountable in a way that sends a very strong message to others that they serve with that this is unacceptable behavior. Um, General Neller, according to 2014 RAND military workplace study, the Marine Corps has the highest rate of sexual assault among the service branches, and I know that we are not talking about sexual assault directly, as we often think about the definition in this um, scandal, but I do believe there's a correlation between the two. And so can you just respond to why you think that is? And I, I appreciate your statements and the statements of everyone here about needing to address this issue, but understand that this committee has heard those kinds of statements for as long as I've been on the committee, and I think much longer. So it's hard to, to believe that something is really going to be done when we hear this repeated again and again, and we see these kinds of situations again and again. So why, why should we believe that it's going to be different this time than it's been in the past? As I stated, stated earlier, Senator, I, this particular issue, I mean, we can talk about sexual assault and, and the numbers. And as the Secretary said, we've, we've struggled. I mean, we're, I had expected that the numbers would go up when we started our training back in 2013 to try to get after sexual assault per se. And I've talked to Senator Gillibrand and Senator McCaskill about this and that they would flatten out and then they would go down. And they flattened out, but they have not gone down. I can give you some other statistics, and I can track every one of these allegations to show you where how it was culminated in some sort of action or no action. Um, why is it going to be different now with the social media? I don't. I think we've we addressed the action of individuals, which is sexual assault or bullying. But I think the bigger issue is, is within the culture. We haven't addressed the fact with all Marines, that all Marines are Marines. I mean, and the female Marines, that are they're a, a small group in our Corps. Um, and for whatever reason, um, there are still some number, uh, and I don't think this, this is separate from the sexual assault issue, but this issue of denigration of women, uh, objectific objectification of women, misogyny, however you want to articulate it, or just bad behavior. Um, is tied to the way that some group of male Marines look at women in the Marine Corps. And I think we can fix that. Uh, I think we can fix it by holding those accountable who are going to, don't want to accept the fact. And uh, we make it part of, uh, we've got to tell commanders, hey, look, there's things you can do out here within the UCMJ if the parameters are met. Um, but this is a this is a very difficult problem on the on this on the sexual assault thing. I'm not going to give up on any of this. Uh, I still think part of our. I mean, I could give you the demographics, and that's an excuse. You know that, you know the percentage of the Marines and what their ages are and all that and the numbers. Uh, we're a young force, okay, uh, but they're Marines and they're expected to conduct themselves at at a higher level. You expect that. I expect that. Um, I think that alcohol. Abuse is another problem that we're going to have to deal with that I think we'll uh, get after that. Uh, but this is all about our leaders going out there, setting the example, and expecting that behavior is going to be in a certain way. Is it going to be different? It's got to be different. I mean, and, and that's my, my charge to myself. I've got to go out there and, and, and as, the, as the senior Marine, Say, this is the way it's going to be. And if you're not going to get along, if you can't have a problem with this, then, as I mentioned in the video I did, and you need to ask yourself, do you really want to be a Marine? If that's not going to change it, then 
Um, I, I believe it is. I've heard enough from enough men and women that are seniors out there that they realize, why they didn't realize it before, I have, I have no excuse, but that, that we're going to change and that we can change. And all I would ask is an opportunity to address this. Uh, I know you've heard that before, um, but that's, that's my ask. Thank you, General. I, I would suggest that you use the term survivor rather than victim for those people who have been yes, ma attacked. Senator Fisher. General, this behavior has to change. It's, um, it's gone on for too long, and we need to, we need to see those changes. You, you spoke about uh, social media and the, the lack of um, recognition that you had on what's going on on social media. The, the Corps does have a policy on social media, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, we do. And you have um, spoken today about making changes to that policy. Do you have any ideas on how that policy needs to be changed? What would, a, what would make a new policy different and more effective at this point? I believe the policy that we revised is focused more on certain behaviors such as the one we're here to discuss today on social media and that to, to tell all Marines that these types of things are unacceptable, they are not part of being a Marine, and they are also punishable under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The previous policy said that, but it didn't say it quite as directly. Um, but it's also going to take leadership to go out and reinforce that to, to not just hide, by, not hide, but to use a piece of paper. But they're going to have to go out and sell it. They're going to have to talk about it. Going to have to make commanders and senior enlisted understand that this has got this has got to change. Um, you know, there are our, our Marines. Um, they use social media. Um, they use it for a lot of good things, as was mentioned by the chairman. Um, we use social media to tell the story of the Marines. And that's fine. Um, but Marines have got to understand that using social media to degrade, denigrate, be disrespectful to another Marine is not just not who we are, but it's illegal. And that if you, if you, are, you are found doing this, then you are potentially subject to the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And I assume Marines are educated on the current policy? They are, but I don't believe, I can't tell you, Senator, that it's done with enough time or reinforcement. We talk about, we start talking to Marines about the values and ethos of being a Marine when they're still waiting to go to recruit training. To whether or not there are specific discussions about this type of thing, um, I'm not... I can't say to you that it's done with, in a manner that's satisfactory to me, both in the quality of the discussion and the quantity, but it will be. Have there been any um, punishments for Marines who have violated the current policy that you have? Senator, I can't give you a specific quote that, that this individual did X and was found guilty at Y. Um, I would ask to take that for the record and get back to you. Um, I asked that question myself, but much of this stuff, much of this type of behavior should be held, could be held accountable at a non-judicial punishment, which is an administrative action, and I don't have the data to give you that answer. Do you have I, if I could add, uh, we have been able to track individuals who have used government computers to access these types of websites, and then we are able to identify the individual and clearly uh, bring punishment to bear. That was, that was my next question. Were government computers used to access these websites or to post anything on them? Uh, we, have, we have not been able to find any incidents of government uh, computers being used to access or post, but we're continuing with the investigation. General, uh, how well do we understand the membership of this group? 
and um, how it breaks down between former Marines and active um, Marines and also retired Marines. What, do, do, we, do you have any information on that right now? Senator, all I can tell you is we believe the numbers of individuals that belong to Marines United was about 30,000 uh, on their public-facing Facebook page. How many of them are active or former or other services or civilians? Um, I can't, I don't have the answer to that. The NCIS is looking into that. Um, the place where these individuals went to post these pictures and make their comments uh, was a link to a server hosted by another internet provider, which has since been taken down. The numbers that we believe had had access to this site was much, much smaller than 30,000. Um, I can give you, I'd ask for NCIS to give you that number in the closed session. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, General Naylor, uh, General Naylor, the military, uh, the Marines, have been aware of online victimization, online um, exploitation of other Marines since 2013, because there's a letter here from Jackie Spears to Chuck Hagel and General Amos with screenshots. So there's, there's no mystery that this has been going on for a very long time. It, it was right in front of, of you and the command to do something about since 2013. We have countless victims who have come forward, and they're not just being harassed online. Once their name, face, um, where they're stationed is posted, do you think the harassment ends online? It doesn't. I spoke to a Marine yesterday, and excuse me, I spoke to a civilian yesterday who has been continued to be harassed in her community because her ex-boyfriend uh, exploited her online. So I have to say, when you say to us, uh, it's got to be different, that rings hollow. I don't know what you mean when you say that. Why does it have to be different? Because you all of a sudden feel that it has to be different? Who has been held accountable? I very much uh, aligned myself with, with Senator Fisher's comments. Who has been ha held responsible? Have you actually uh, investigated and found guilty anybody? If we can't crack Facebook, how are we supposed to be able to confront Russian aggression and cyber hacking throughout our military? It is a serious problem when we have members of our military denigrating female Marines who will give their life to this country in the way they have with no response from leadership. I can tell you, your answers today are unsatisfactory. They do not go far enough. And I would like you to know what you intend to do to the commanders who are responsible for good order and discipline. All of this behavior is in violation of Article 120 and Article 34 as so stated. They are violating the code of criminal justice. Why are commanders who have asked for all responsibility to deal with sexual assault and these behaviors for the five years this committee has been focused on this issue? You have demanded that you maintain control of all these issues, but where's the accountability for failure? Who is being held accountable for doing nothing since 2013? Who? Which commander? I am very concerned that this is part of a culture that is resulting in the high levels of sexual assault. We know from the FY14 SAPRO report that 60% of men and 58% of women who experienced sexual harassment or gender discrimination in the previous year throughout all the services indicated that a supervisor or unit leader was one of the people engaged in the violations. That is a problem with our command. So if you're dedicated to fixing the culture of the Marines and all the services, what do you plan to do to hold commanders responsible who fail to get this done? Senator, I understand and share your concern. Um, if I were aware or any, I would expect that any commander was aware if someone was reported any allegation of anything, but particularly something as serious as sexual assault and the chain of command didn't do anything, that that commander would be held accountable. I don't have any statistics for you on that. Um, I can tell you that 
of all those individuals who have come forward with allegations of sexual assault, what's happened to individuals that um, were uh, the charges uh, ended up with some sort of process and ended up with an adjudication. Um, but those are just numbers. As you clearly and rightfully state, uh, this is a problem with our culture. And I'm still in, in the process. I mean, I, I don't have a good answer for you. I'm not going to sit here and duck around this thing. I'm not. I'm responsible. I'm the commandant. I own this. And we are going to have to, you know, you know, you've heard it before. But we're going to have to change how we see ourselves and how we do, how we treat each other. Um, that's a that's a lame answer, but ma'am, that's all I that's the best I can tell you right now. Um, we've got to change, and that's on me. My time has expired. Senator Cotton. I was uh, very disappointed and troubled to read this news uh, recently, as were all members of this committee and most Americans, no doubt. Um, I am reassured by the comments of General Neller and the Sergeant Major this morning about how serious they take it and the gravity with which they treat it. Um, General Neller, you mentioned that there are 30,000 members of this group. Um, you don't have the breakdown of active versus reserve versus retired. Any indication yet of the breakdown between Marines, NCOs, and officers? Not in specific numbers. Uh, I think we're going to get that information, Senator. But uh, this, there, uh, I would, I would, uh, I'm not going to speculate on if there, what the level of officer involvement is or isn't. Um, but I think the NCIS Folks can tell you that. I don't know the number. I'd be speculating, but um, I wouldn't say this is uh, it's highly unlikely this is just uh, enlisted, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, what, they, what these members, and I just remind that, uh, not to stick up for Marines United, but the, the, number, the, the great majority of people that went to this site and there are other sites. I mean, we're finding, we find sites all the time. I mean, we're looking uh, out there, and NCIS is looking, and people are telling us about other sites. So Marines United is not alone in this despicable, disgusting behavior. Um, but I think eventually we'll know the, the breakdown, uh, not just who was a member of a Marines United, but who went to this other link and participated in this this behavior. Regrettably, I'm afraid. Sir, if I could add. Yes, um, Mr. Stackley. Uh, to date, we are, we are dealing with uh, cooperative uh, information. In other words, we're trying to draw information uh, short of probable cause in which we can seize the information. We're gaining it cooperatively. NCIS has opened up a tip line. Uh, they have received, uh, as of yesterday, 53 calls on that tip line that's opening up other avenues to identify, to help to identify individuals, but also to identify these other sites uh, that the commandant has referred to. And my, my opening statement, I call this a bell ringer. This is a bell ringer. We're not, go we're not gonna go back. We need, to, we need to dive, plumb the depths of this issue to understand how far, how wide it is, and then working up and down the chain of command, whether you call it culture, whether you call it good order and discipline, get every, not just every Marine, every man, woman in uniform to understand what our standards are, what is and is not acceptable. On one hand, and on the other hand, prosecute these other avenues where this behavior is taking place to the extent of our ability. We're not going to go backwards. We have spoken at this hearing this morning uh, quite a bit so far about law and policy, and those are important questions. I want to speak just a matter about uh, the expectations we have for the young men and women we have in uniform, um, putting aside law and policy. Uh, back when I was a company grade officer and we had to do safety briefs every Friday afternoon to ensure that if our soldiers misbehaved on the weekend, we could tell our chain of command that we had ordered them not to do so, uh, rather than get into every single detail that soldiers 
might do over the weekend, I would simply say obey your general orders in the law and be a good soldier, a good citizen, and a good man. I assume that your company grade officers and company grade NCOs do something similar on weekends or before it passes. Uh, putting aside the requirements of law and policy, uh, General Neller, do you believe every Marine should know that this kind of conduct uh, violates the spirit and the ethic of the Corps? Senator, you would uh, think after all the discussion and all the training and the things that we've done that people would understand that this type of behavior was unacceptable, but apparently whatever we've done or tried to do is not worked or we haven't been clear or people think that they can go on social media with some persona or avatar or character. But as Senator Gillibrand rightfully stated, I mean, some people use their full name in their unit. Yeah. And, and because they participate, the, um, the frustration is, our, is uh, what is a crime and what is not, as opposed to, you know, boorish, stupid behavior. And this is beyond that. So um, that's where we are in, in working through that right now. Sergeant Major. I believe, yes, I believe, and if they don't, they should now, and Commander myself, I'm going down to Camp Lejeune tomorrow, I'm going to talk to people and make sure they try to make this as crystal clear as I possibly can. Sergeant Major, if I could just ask you one question. Uh, your time has expired. Senator Blumenthal. Sorry. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you used the words, uh, Commandant Neller, uh, despicable and disgusting. That certainly is a feeling that everybody on this panel shares with you. And uh, I think also many of us share the passion and impatience that Senator Gillibrand expressed very powerfully because there have been instances in the past and your acknowledgement that perhaps the past violations of trust and law have not been addressed sufficiently aggressively may give us some comfort here. But I think we're all going to watch closely and demand from you not just the words that you've given us, which we trust, but also action, which speaks louder than words. Do you know personally of any commanders who had knowledge of this site before it was disclosed? No, Senator, I don't. And do you believe that the same kind of aggressive discipline should be focused on the chain of command as well as on the perpetrators who were involved in the immediate conduct? If I they do. had knowledge. I do. And will you assure us that you will take aggressive action against them? I do. You mentioned earlier that you thought that non-judicial punishment was appropriate for the Marines who may have been involved, or at least uh, many of them. Would you agree that the Uniform Code of Military Justice should be applied as aggressively as possible in these instances and that violations should be prosecuted to the full extent of penalties that can be achieved. Let me clarify my comment. When I said non-judicial punishment has applicability, it does, but you know whether that is the level at which these, these, these allegations are adjudicated is up to the up to the chain of command all I was trying to imply is that that is a tool available to commanders if the act is more egregious then there would be other other venues more serious venues available to commanders w would you agree that the chain of command may be unable to 
prosecute as aggressively as possible if, in fact, there are allegations within the chain of command that ought to be pursued. I don't think that should make a difference. I mean, it, it might ch cause a commander if someone or their subordinates was complicit in this, you know, but a violation is a violation. We're all accountable. But that might make it more difficult for someone to take action against a fellow Marine who was within the chain of command. Would there be some process, even now under existing law, and we've sought to reform or change it, to make sure that there is accountability? We select our commanders based on their skill and their ability and their potential to command. They have got to make the hard decisions. And so uh, if that involves, and all, we've all done it, if that involves disciplining somebody that is in the chain of, your own chain of command or that you know, then that's what you do. And uh, two articles of the Uniform Code of Military Justice have been mentioned, 120 and 134, neither specifically prohibit cyberbullying. Uh, my thought has been that perhaps there ought to be a specific provision that is applicable to the conduct involved here, which in effect is a form of cyberbullying. Would you support such a provision? We've had discussions about if whether or not the UCMJ is, is has the ability to address this. To me, we've stated what's beha what behavior on site in cyberspace is acceptable, not acceptable. To me, that is the weight of a of a Article 92 disobedience of an order. So 120C addresses addresses specifically the uh, taking someone's picture without their permission and using it. And 134 would address good order and discipline and those things. So I, I believe the tools are there. It, if that's the level of punishment or administrative action you wanted to go to, um, if if the facts support that, Senator, but I you. think there there may be some discussion about. Uh, I I think that's something that we're going to get into with this task force, that whether we whether there are provisions within the UCMJ that may, be to, may need to be more specific about this particular type of potential offense because it, this is not new, new, but um, there's got to be some tools for commanders to be able to address this specifically. Senator, if I could add, on cyberbullying, I don't, we, uh, we hypothetically are talking about ways we could prosecute it through the UCMJ, but it hasn't been tested yet. And so your question regarding is there value in getting into greater detail specifics within a specific article, I think the task force which the Commandant has launched, I think that's uh, central to one of the uh, areas that they are in fact looking at, and we need to keep it on the plate, and we need to come back to you with specific recommendations. Senator Ernst. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Those who participated in these disgusting and horrible actions have not only failed our Marine Corps, um, they've failed the men and women who wish to join your ranks, and they have failed our country. And I'm not as eloquent as, as some of the other members on this panel. All I can do is express to you how disappointed I am. I'm very disappointed. General Neller, I hope that you can convey the concerns you've delivered to this committee today directly to your Marines, not through a press conference, not through your designees, but directly to as many Marines as you possibly can. Implementing change to this type of behavior begins at the ground level, and you are a leader, sir. As reports continue to come in across the DOD, it's clear that this seems to be service-wide. This is service-wide, and so we need a service-wide approach to addressing this issue. This is a cultural problem, not just in our military, but society at large. And hearing that many individuals were not surprised about these reports disappoints me. Hearing that there may not be a way to hold many of the people that were involved in this accountable, that angers me. Illegal or not, members of 
our community need to know this type of activity creates a culture that leads to sexual assault. Those that sat complacently by as this unfolded, from the NCOs to the officers, are all contributing to this issue. There is no excuse, and you have stated that, General Neller. I appreciate that greatly. There is absolutely no excuse for this, especially for those who wear our nation's uniform. The steps that you now take moving forward uh, following this event will define each of us uh, before this committee. Regardless of what legal or administrative action you are able to take, I hope this leads to you personally sitting down, and you, Sergeant Major, as well, sitting down and educating our Marines. A social media handbook has been discussed by a number of folks here on the panel, but how many Marines actually read that? How many sit down and read it? It is up to all of us to educate our Marines. The Marine Corps has a high turnover rate. We have thousands of Marines coming through every year, and we have to make all of them aware of what they represent. They need to know that the actions they take here at home and online can take away from the su success of their brothers and their sisters in arms. This is an absolute issue that impacts our entire society. It's an absolutely horrible issue impacting us, but it's one that we must stop. And I say we, it's not just the Marine Corps, it's those of us that are sitting here today. We will be evaluating how to give you the right tools, the necessary tools to combat this issue. And absolutely, you must hold those Marines accountable. In the meantime, I hope that you will continue to evaluate what we need to do to combat this issue, not just in the Marine Corps, but service-wide, and what we need to do to impact it society at large. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Donnelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Marines who did this have betrayed their fellow Marines. And these women Marines stood up and said they would put their lives on the line for this country and give them up if necessary. And this is the treatment they got in return. But they've also betrayed those Marines who fought in Anbar Province, in Helmand Province, in the Gulf in Vietnam, in Korea, in Guadalcanal, Iwo Jima, um, who built the core inch by inch, step by step. And they've, these Marines who have done this have disgraced themselves, but they also let down the core and all of those other Marines um, who fought for our country and to help create the core. I went online and found that there's already a Marines United 2.0 uh, posting links to the same materials that already has over 3,000 members. What can be done about this? And what does that say? General? Sir, if the Marines United 2.0 is there for their original mandate to help veterans, that's fine. But if there is a link that takes the, anybody who can get access to the, a similar page where there are posted pictures of anybody, but more, more likely female Marines, and when they're making commentary, we'll go like we did before, and we'll, we will ask the provider to take it down. But that's, that's where we find ourselves, and again, that's where we find ourselves. Now, whether we can get the information or, or get a, uh, make them hold that data for us, you know, we've recently in this investigation with Marines United, um, NCIS recently got some more information, so that should allow us to get to that. But again, you know, we're, we're addressing the symptom here. The problem is that anybody would even want to do this in the first place. Right. I mean, I, I, that's the part, you know, and I, I get beyond my, this doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, they're doing it. Why? What is it, what is it that makes anyone feel that they're going to make themselves feel better by being degrading about any individual, whether it be based on their, their gender or their race or their sexual preference? Um, 
if, if they are indeed a Marine or anybody, it doesn't matter, you know, that that's, that's not who we are and what we do. So our folks now and with NCIS's help, we're out there looking, we're finding other sites and we go through the legal process and go to the provider and ask them to take it down. Um, I think NCIS can give you more information in the closed session about, because they're fine, there are other sites out there. I mean, this, this is not, Marines 2.0 is just one. Um, and again, some of them are legit and they do good and proper things for veterans or anybody that belongs. Others, not so much, not okay. at all. Senator Sullivan. I, I would uh, suggest, General, that uh, they're also disrespecting you. They're saying that the gentleman's time has expired. Senator Sullivan. Oh. Mr. Chairman, I believe you had a minute and 23 seconds left. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What, what I wanted to say is, is they're basically challenging you, General. They're thinking that they can get away with this. And uh, um, you're the commandant of the Corps. And um, I think it's up to you. And, and, and I, I trust and, and believe you will tell them and show them that they are not bigger than the Corps. That they cannot treat their fellow Marines like this. Um, what do we say? Uh, and and how can a, how can the women Marines feel that the Corps has their back? I, I mean, I think that's a, when a young woman makes a decision that number one she wants to serve the country and put her life on the line for us. Um, why will she choose the Marines? Uh, how do we how do how do we reinst reinstate that trust that we have her back? The only way we can, Senator, is through our actions, and that show that 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 anyone who sticks their hand up to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and wants to earn the has the willingness to earn the title Marine is going to be a full fledged member of the team, like the two female Marines sitting behind me here. Um, I've got to, we've got to make them believe it. We've got to earn. They don't have to just earn the title of Marines. We've got to earn their belief that they're going to get the same opportunity as anybody else to compete and do their, be the best person they can be. Um, so I, I can sit here and say it, but and we've got to earn, re-earn the trust of not just of, of them, this committee, and the American people. I understand that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My apologies, Senator Donnelly, for cutting you off. No worries, sir. Senator Sullivan. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I want to begin by thanking Senator Gillibrand for her uh, calling for this hearing and her unfailing advocacy for women in the military. Like you, General, I'm a father of three daughters and uh, also spent a lot of my civilian career focused on combating the problem that Senator Ernst mentioned is a problem not only in the military but across the country of domestic violence and sexual assault. And I, I think uh, Senator Gillibrand's focus on this benefits the military and the country. I also appreciate your and Sergeant Major's opening statement to say you're going to take responsibility for this. I think like everybody on this committee, General, when I first read the news about the Marines attacking and degrading other Marines, it's what Senator Donnelly just mentioned, I was outraged, disgusted, embarrassed as a citizen, as a lawmaker, and as a Marine. And I'm here in this capacity as a U.S. Senator, but Earning the title of a Marine is the proudest personal achievement of my life, always has been, always will be. You know, we talk about that there's been no more formidable fighting force in the world, but the Marine Corps, in my view, goes much deeper than that. I mentioned a story last year. I was walking this, down the street on Capitol Hill. There was a mom and two young kids, a boy and a girl, walking by me and a group of 8th and I Marines in PT gear coming out strong formidable 
And they passed this family, and this mom looked at her kids and said, those are Marines. They're courageous, they're fearless, and they'll do anything to protect our country and keep us safe. That's what mothers in the country are telling their kids. So this goes way deeper than this. I believe if the Marine Corps can't prevent Marines from attacking and degrading women Marines, the Marine Corps is going to lose what it means to the country, to the Marine Corps, to other Marines. So, General, you talked a lot about a perversion of the culture. What do you mean by that? Well, Senator, like you, um, I believe all Marines have a belief that our motto, Semper Fidelis, our core values of honor, courage, and commitment are what we are, and that everything that we've seen in this uh, Marines United event is not. And so anybody that's out there involved in this or any other site or doing this, and this is, as, as this has been accurately pointed out, this is something that's been out there for some time. I don't, I don't know how they think they can reconcile being a Marine with this. It, it just doesn't, I, I don't mentally see how you get from A to B. One of the things about the Marine Corps and all military services, but particularly in the Marine Corps, there's a culture, and it's part of what we do, is we bring violence to the enemies of our nation, and we're good at bringing violence upon the enemies of our nation. Isn't the perversion of the culture where the Marines are actually bringing violence upon women Marines? Isn't that the perversion of the culture? which every Marine who's honorable thinks is a disgusting perversion? I would believe that's, uh, I believe that's a very accurate description, Senator. Thank you for that. Sergeant Major, can I ask you a question? You know, you, got, you both have talked about boot camp and getting at this early. One of the things, as you know, that the Marine Corps does very well in boot camp is it focuses on the history of the Marine Corps. You walk out of boot camp, if you can make it, after three months, and you know about Chosen Reservoir, you know about Iwo Jima, you know about all those things, and you take pride in it. You know, General, I thought your opening statement about referencing five Marine women who were killed in action defending our nation, do you think, Sergeant Major, that Focusing on some of those issues with regard to our history and boot camp can start to set the culture on a more proper course to recognize that, hey, look at these. They're Marines, right? It doesn't matter if they're men or women. They died for their country. Could we do a better job of instilling that at the outset as we shape the outlook and minds and culture of these 18- and 20-year-old kids? Absolutely, sir. Uh, the task force that the Commandant's put together, uh, led by the Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps. Uh, we met a few days ago, and that's exactly where we're starting. We're going beyond that and starting at the, at the delayed entry program. We're looking at everything we teach Marines, and we have to understand within ourselves, in a four-year enlistment, 120,000 Marines would have gone in and out of the Marine Corps. 120,000. We would have turned over two-thirds of the Marine Corps in a four-year period, and we need to step back after 15, 16 years of fighting, and we're still in that fight, and absolutely um, take a look at not only how we make Marines uh, from those who walk to the door and want to be something better than self, but also how we retain Marines and families with our ethos of honor, courage, and commitment. Um, we're going to seriously take a look at that because the processes that worked yesterday they're not working today because other uh, societal ills that come through the door with every individual that come in, that the tools that we have are not being as effective as they need to be today. So we're going to take a look at from the recruiting of our Marines until the time they leave the gates, and also beyond that, ask the, the veteran support organizations out there to take a look at our model, once a Marine, always a Marine, and every Marine that leaves out the door, tell them they're, they're responsible for that Eagle Globe and Anchor. There's some bad actors that have worn the Eagle Globe and Anchor. They're determined.
to keep these things going. And, and, and we know this for a fact. And we got to do better with our ethos and, and find the tools, the ways, and convince those that come through the gates and those who, like you said earlier, who are thinking about coming through the gates, the mom and dads who are talking to their kids. I have a son at the Naval Academy. They left for spring break going to Orlando. Uh, my wife is freaking, she's scared to death. And uh, I just sat down with the four boys in my basement and talked about this, talked about sexual assault, talked about the ethos of honor, courage, and commitment, the fact that one day they, they too are going to lead, and they may lead in combat. But first they must lead back here in peacetime, show that they're worthy leaders, worthy leaders to go on and lead Marines and sailors in combat. I have a 14-year-old daughter. I'd like to be, you know, proud if my daughter said she wanted to, she, she wanted to be a Marine, just like my son. I have to assure that I leave the footprint along with the commandant that provides a way of safety for not only my kids, but all kids, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on behalf of Chairman McCain, Senator Kane, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to the witnesses. This is obviously a very serious hearing, important to have it. I'm the father of a Marine. I uh, employ a lot of Marines in my office. Uh, my state uh, is a state where every Marine officer is trained, every Marine security guard is trained, a lot of other Marines are trained and serve honorably. And I think I just can say on behalf of an awful lot of Virginians, this is a moment when this story broke that a lot of people's heart sunk. A lot of people's stomach were turned. And this is, this is absolutely critical to get right. You're completely aware of the work of this committee under the leadership of Senators Gillibrand, McCaskill, and others to tackle sexual assault in the military. And it's still very much an open proposition on this committee uh, because the question about whether sexual assault or other crimes should be treated within the Uniform Code of Military Justice or separately is something that we've resolved for now to try within the um, chain of command. But we're, we're testing the evidence. We're looking at the data to determine if that was right or not. And many of us, if we conclude that we're not getting the results that we want, even those of us who have supported chain of command in the past may conclude that it's just not sufficient. And it would be tragic for the Marine Corps if that decision were to be made because of a belief that the Marine Corps' bad example would cause us to make that decision for all branches. Or the Marine Corps' bad example would cause us to make a decision that would be with respect to one branch of the service and not the others. And so that's the, the, the weight of this matter in a body that is still really assessing whether the military, the Marine Corps, but the other branches have the tools that they need to tackle this problem. The Marine Corps does a great job of, of, of setting people aside who don't meet physical fitness standards. The Marine Corps has done a, a, a very intense amount of work to get into the redefinition of military MOSs to provide gender neutral standards that people need to meet to, to serve in MOSs. If the Marine Corps at attacks this problem with the same degree of attention and passion that they attack issue like physical standards, then you're gonna solve it. But I think I speak for everybody up here out of a belief that we just haven't seen that. We just haven't seen that level. General Neller, I want to ask you something. I thought your opening statement was very good, but I did have one question about it. Could you get your written statement, because we don't have copies of it here, and just read the first couple sentences of it again to me? Because I have one question about what you said. The beginning, sir? Yeah, just right at the very beginning. Normally, I appear before this committee to tell you about the extraordinary things your Marines are doing at home and around the globe, but today is different. I'm here today to discuss the details of some truly disturbing and unacceptable actions that have allegedly been committed on social media. Prior Stop right there. That have allegedly been committed on social media. Are we talking about allegations here? Are we talking about something that, that has happened? I mean, it, 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 there, it might be an allegation as to who was involved, but this is not just an allegation about something that happened on social media. This is a fact. Isn't that correct? I, Senator, I, we're going to go into closed session. That might be a question that's most appropriate for closed I, I, session. But I, I just think it's important to, to really make this clear. We're not talking about any individual in this hearing, and we shouldn't for the reason that you stated. 
But if in the public hearing this is described as alleged behavior, that there are allegations of something on social media, I don't think we're treating it with the seriousness we need to. This is not allegations about social media. This stuff happened. And the general's testimony that Marines United isn't unique and S Senator Donnelly's description of Marines United 2.0, I just think it's important that we not leave confusion with the public. That, that we're here just talking about some allegations of something on social media. This happened. Now, who was involved? We're not going to get into that in an open session. But I would just put that to your attention going forward, because we're talking about more than just allegations here. Secretary Stackley, let me just ask you in, in close. Um, I have a hard time believing that this massive sharing of information about women in the Marines would just be limited to this branch. Talk to me about investigations into whether this is also going on in the other branches of the military. I, <clears throat> I can't speak specifically for the other branches, but uh, in the closed session, what I would uh, recommend we discuss is some of the information that NCIS is uh, arriving at through their tip line and the number of websites that indicate uh, similar similar activity on other websites. Then let me just ask very, it this I think way. It's very important. Do you believe this activity is limited just to the Marine Corps? No, sir. Thank you. No, sir. On behalf of Chairman McCain, uh, Senator Tillich. But, but, but I don't want to let it stop right there. Ahead, this sir. is at the top of Secretary Mattis' priority list, working across the departments, the service departments, to get at this issue. This is not being uh, managed as an isolated issue for the Marine Corps as it regards the Department of Defense. We recognize vulnerabilities here, and we need to prosecute those. Senator Tillis, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to try and be brief so that we can get to, to the uh, closed session, but I, di I did want to get a clarification on the Marines United, that really the structure of what we're talking about here, because I think it's important, and, and we can get into numbers later, but we're talking about 20 or 30,000 Marines involved in a social media network, much of which isn't the subject of the actions that we need to get to the bottom of. Can you give me some rough idea of the subpage where the illicit activities were occurring, what that is as a percentage of the total people engaged and what would otherwise be positive social media interaction? We don't know how many, we know that we believe there are about 30,000 total members of the page. How many active, how many former, how many reserve, how many other services? But in that page, but in, the, but in, the, in the link to take you to this separate drive, I have been told that the numbers were about 500. Okay, that's the important point because I think a lot of people think that there are some 30,000 Marines engaged in this activity. It is, the number is whatever it is, but it's a subset and what we think is a minor subset of the total page. I think that's very important. I, I, would, I would understand and appreciate your comments, Senator, but it doesn't matter if there's one. I get it. Now I want to get to the next. Uh, next For those who are in this subset and involved in these activities, what is the maximum penalty and discipline that they can receive if they're found to have been engaged at any level in that, uh, in that sub-site? Can they be court-martialed? Can they be imprisoned? Can they be fined? In other words, what discipline are these folks subject to right now based on the current rules? I think that would depend on what their level of involvement was and what they were doing. And Let's say for the worst of the worst, whatever that may be, just hypothetical. For the worst of the worst, what po potential penalty could they, they receive from this? I'd say they could be court-martialed, sir. What about a veteran? Somebody that's no longer in active uh, service that's also engaged in this, I'm assuming just based on the, ma the numbers of the Sergeant Major, there's going to be some of those involved. What, what consequence could they possibly suffer? I think it depends on what the state, certain states have certain laws about this, and there's certain provisions about what is consent with the use of a picture. Um, I'd like to find out, you don't have to answer the question, but I want to look at other things that we need to do here to make this a very, very painful exercise for somebody caught guilt, being guilt, caught guilty of doing this. As a member of the Veterans Committee, if there's something we could do to disallow their benefits for, for bad behavior after they're discharged, those are the sorts of things that we have to do. A part of what you need to do is change the culture, and I believe that you will, General Neller. 
And I think that we need to work on that. But we also need to make it a very frightening proposition for people going forward to be captured into this sort of activity. So I'd like to get people to report back to me as a member of the Veterans Committee, as, a, as the chair of the Personnel Subcommittee, what more do we need to do to make this a very frightening proposition for somebody to get tempted into doing going forward so that you don't have to focus on these sorts of things. I want you to train Marines to be able to be safe and lethal on the battlefield, not doing these sorts of things. And I think we need to work to make it very clear that this is going to, this is going to produce dire consequences for people stupid enough to do these kind of things going forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I've, gone, I've gone from anger and disappointment to really sadness. This is a sad day for the Marine Corps and for our armed services. Uh, what bothers me, General Neller, is that I'm convinced that all of us human beings have the capacity to be good or evil. And how that comes out in any given situation, particularly in a group situation, depends almost entirely on how we're led. And one of the things that bothers me is there was a quote in the press last week from the reporter and the former Marine who really broke this story, that not once on this website or on Marines United 2.0 did he see anybody say, this isn't what we're going to do. This is wrong. This is improper. This is disrespectful. Not once. And that speaks to me of a culture that goes all the way down. And you can have proclamations and issue letters and everything else, but if you've got lower-ranking officers and non-commissioned officers who are winking and laughing and just they deliver the statement with a little grin, that undermines the whole thing. And this is an indication to me of a serious cultural problem that goes beyond the specifics of orders. Do you, do you understand what I'm suggesting? Senator, I understand perfectly what you're suggesting, and I, I agree. Um, you know, being a bystander for any sort of an offense is something that we, that we struggle with. Um, you know, whenever I was told once, by a senior officer that the Marine Corps is built on discipline and it's a rock, it's the foundation of our house. And every time you walk by something you know is wrong, it's the equivalent of taking a hammer and hitting that rock and putting a chip in it. And if enough people walk by, pretty soon that thing's gonna crack. So we may be, we may be at that point, you know, and, and I think Marines, in their mind, they, can, they somehow have separated what they do during operational things, what they do in training, and what they do when they're not out there actively engaged. They think that the, the social media, the, the net, gives them anonymity to do this type of thing. They don't, they're ignorant as to the impact. Uh, and I don't, I, um, that's what I've got to make everybody understand. No, this, it doesn't work that way. But this, beyond, is, this is your Marine Corps. But and beyond this posting and doing, being dumb about what they put online is the underlying... These guys apparently didn't feel that they were doing anything wrong. They were on this website with 30,000 people on it, and they were posting it, and nobody said, this isn't a, appropriate, or, gee, fellas, do you think this is a good idea? That's, that's, that indicates to me that that they felt empowered or enabled to do this. And, and so it, it, it's really not a question of, of issuing orders. It's issuing orders that are credible, that go all the way down the line in terms of, of not only saying the right thing, but meaning it and conveying it. Mr. Brennan, the individual that broke the story, he said it. And I, and I think we're finding, and we're going to find, that there are more going to come out and say what should have been said before, if not on this. You know, there are a number of people out there that, that have, the, have the ear of whatever this, this group is. Um, By the I, way, you know that they're mocking you and the leadership I understand and, that. on this Marie, MU 2.0, and they're saying, come and get us NCIS. They're continuing to post pictures as recently as this past weekend. Uh, I mean, they're not getting the word here. Well, then we'll have to get the word to them. 
let me just follow up with one uh, quick question to what uh, Mr. Tillis asked, and perhaps this is for the closed session. I think one of the real problems here is what is the jurisdiction, what is the accountability for a former Marine? Who's who's not in the there? There are rules there under uh, the, uh, 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 the military code. There are consequences for people who are in the Marines now, but if they're out, in fact, again, one of the things I've read is a guy posted his discharge papers and said, "Try to come and get me, NCIS." Uh, so that is a, a, a separate question, uh, Mr. Stackley. Can you respond in, in open session on that, or is this going to be a matter of state law? Uh, this, uh, today, it's a matter of state law. The, you know, the first, uh, first thing I try to dive into is what's legal versus what's not legal, and then what's acceptable versus what is not acceptable. And there are a number of, uh, of behaviors here that are absolutely unacceptable, and yet they are legal. Within, within the services, we have the ability to, to uh, draw that line in terms of something that's not acceptable, we're going to prosecute outside of the service where it is legal and unacceptable, we are limited in our ability to prosecute. And so I, I welcome uh, uh, Senator Sullivan's uh, comments, or I'm sorry, Senator Tillis's comments regarding uh, added authorities that we might want to look into that give us the ability to go outside of the uniformed services to, for everybody to understand. You served in our country, you left the uniform behind, you remain accountable to the code that we hold those still in uniform to behave to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you. Uh, did someone actually put their discharge online and said, come get me? Did they actually do that? Who, who, are, who is that person? Do we know their name? I'll give you the, I'll give you the citation. Well, let's make them famous right here. What is their name? We'll get it later. We'll publicly let the world know who this person is. Uh, the website. I'm a little confused now. I mean, I'm not the best person to, to tell you about the Internet. That's for darn sure. Uh, of the 30,000 people who are viewing this, <clears throat> were most of them doing bad things, or were they just talking as Marines, uh, Secretary? Um. The, the numbers that we are, are looking at right now is the, the majority of them were not involved in this activity. So the, the posting of photos, sometimes, elite, you know, uh, somebody took a photo of a young female Marine. How many of the 30,000 went to that part of it? The, the number that uh, we're carrying is about 500, but we're still... The investigation well, remains ongoing. I, I'm agreeing with the general one is too many, but I'm just trying to get my head around I mean, what is this web? What was the purpose of this website? Uh, Marines United was initiated five or six years ago with good purposes in mind, and that was to support Marines who were suffering from PTSD and post post uh, coming out of combat action. So these websites started with a good purpose and. Some people have hijacked it, basically. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Sergeant Major, you got a 14-year-old daughter. Yes, sir. <clears throat> what would you tell someone who has a 14-year-old daughter that doesn't know as much about the Marines as you do about whether that daughter should join the Marines? First off, sir, I'm ashamed of, of the actions of this website. Uh, we recruit Marines, as I said before, 30,000 a year. And I can assure that that parent, mother or father, that the, that the chain of command in the Marine Corps, the leadership, we're going to do everything we can. Would you tell those parents send, send, my, send their daughter to the Marines, given what we know today? Yes, sir. And I can assure them that myself, the commandant, and the leadership, we're going to pave a way that's respectful. What would, you say, what would you say to that young woman, <clears throat> General, who's thinking about joining the Marines? I can understand why they would have some questions. Um, Don't you think this is kind of stepped all over recruiting of young women? <laughs> Senator, we're, we're talking to our recruiting folks because the irony of all this is we're trying to increase the number of women in the Marine Corps. Right. And, and, I, I, and this I, certainly, I would say, is not right. helpful. Uh, I would say this is devastatingly bad. Would you agree with me that this is one of the darkest chapters in the history of the Marine Corps? even though there's maybe 500 people involved? 
we have not distinguished ourselves in this affair. No. Having said that, uh, you're the finest fighting force in the history of the world, pound for pound, the United States Marine Corps. You have an honored tradition, but every organization has dark moments. Do you agree with me this is one of the darkest moments and it needs to be fixed? Yes, Senator. There's two ways to get people to do better. Appeal to the better nature, Sergeant Major Green. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, sir. And scare the hell out of them. Yes, sir. General, do you believe that people are sufficiently afraid of degrading their fellow female Marines as of this moment? Based on their actions, no. No, Senator. Will you promise me that there will be a lot of fear coming? We will do all we can to hold people accountable. Okay. The Marine hymn says, first to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. Do you believe you're in our fight to keep that honor clean? Absolutely, Senator, we have to. Are you committed to winning that fight? I am. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I realize that uh, so much of this kind of behavior uh, has to do with uh, some attitudes and, and culture, and it's very difficult, General Niller, to change the culture. So I'm wondering whether uh, one of the ways that we can deal with this issue is to provide some deterrence. And would you agree that one of the ways that we could deter this kind of behavior is through court martials where appropriate? Senator, I believe deterrence is part of this, and there's got to be accountability, whether it be a court martial or other, other processes, yes. Well, in terms of, uh, well, changing the culture, I mean, would you, uh, how would you begin to even change the culture? Would, this has been longstanding, not just in the Marines, but uh, issues that, that involve our, our, um, <laughs> all of our services. So how do you even begin to change the culture when, for example, you, you have a commander-in-chief who exhibits certain attitudes toward women? How do you change the culture? The only way I know how we've done this in the past when we dealt with other issues and we accept the fact, I mean, I, I, there are always going to be those that are going to not be able to adjust and they'll have to be, uh, that'll be addressed. But I believe that most Marines join the Marine Corps to improve themselves, that they're, they're good and decent people, and they've got to understand that there are certain behaviors that we expect and that we recognize positively, and there's others that we do not. And part of that's having a discussion. It's got to start at the beginning when they first see their recruiter, and it has to be modeled throughout the organization. And there are obviously those either who are not modeling the culture that we want, or they're even condoning it. So, as the Sergeant Major said, we're going to go back, take a look where it starts. This is for all Marines, it starts at recruit training, or in the stars at officer candidate school. And we're going to look at how we talk about this, make sure they understand it. But as you say, at some point there has to be deterrence because there will, I would like to say we'd be 100% successful, but um, we probably will not. So for those that are not able to comply, there has to be deterrence. So um, I'm... Uh, assuming that, that uh, you will take every step necessary to identify whether uh, certain um, codes of behavior were uh, uh, violated and then to pursue uh, court martials, that, that you will do that very, very strenuously. Yes, Senator. I would say another aspect of all of this is that um, uh, what, uh, what kind of message are you giving to the current uh, female Marines? I don't know how many women there are in the Marines, but uh, have you brought everyone together in, in a way that, that uh, the message gets to not just individuals who are undergoing training or during the recruitment process, but the current situation with all of your, uh, your women Marines, and, and have you had any kind of a gathering of uh, 
uh, of the Marines, both male and female, to talk about how this is totally unacceptable. Senator, the only way I can address 185,000 Marines, or right today about 184, and there's about 15,000 women Marines. About 1,500 of them are officers, the 13,500 are enlisted, is for me to use um, our own platforms on social media to tell them what's going on and what they should expect from their leadership. Um, but you all, excuse me, but yes, that's you, but uh, there are also uh, all of your, your uh, leaders on the basis, and what are they doing to get I, the message across en masse? And we've, we have spoken um, to all leadership last Friday. We issued a letter or a instructions for them to go out and engage in this conversation. Um, I'm going to follow that up um, this week. With even more direction, I'm going down, and the Sergeant Major and I are going down to Camp Lejeune to directly speak to Marines in person. Um, but it's going to take it's going to take some work, uh, so that everybody gets down to the last the last Marine. So we have a, a plan to speak both personally and using other venues or forums, such as this hearing today, to tell them what's going on and what they should expect and what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So if I were to go to Kanye Marine Corps, for example, would there, um, would there be a session that I could attend where th this uh, situation would, could be, di would be discussed? There will be, or there has been. I'm, I don't know exactly when commanders have scheduled this, but I can find that out for you, Senator, when you're home, and if you want to participate, I would appreciate that. I will certainly check into that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General, uh, you and the Sergeant Major have both made it very clear that you have been disgusted with this, this activity. Uh, I believe you when you say that you want this ended. At the same time, I'm just wondering, when you first heard about this and, 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 and you're working your way through it, did it come to mind that this may very well be an outgrowth of the discrimination that we've seen in terms of men who may very well have thought that we just simply don't think this is the place for women in the military? Senator, we talked about that, and, and I'm sure there are, are going to be people that have that particular view, but okay, but I don't see how that gets you from that particular view to where you have to take a picture of somebody, post it online, and then mock, haze, harass, degrade, or even uh, potentially assault them online. I mean, that's, you know, whether that's their motivation or not, um, I don't know. Whether it's, you know, I've heard it described as the dark humor of veterans, um, that's a cop out. But we also know that there are Marines that are participating in this who've never been shot at in their lives. So they're just trying to get credibility. I don't know. It really doesn't matter what their motivation is to me. It's the behavior. And whatever made them think that, that they were going to do this um, or watch it and not report it, that's what we've got to get after. The reality is, is that we can't go to war without women anymore, can we? No, Senator, we can't. There's 500 individuals that we believe have participated in the, in the inappropriate activity on this particular website that's been, been brought to light. Do we know how many of the 500 would perhaps have been former members versus the number that are current members? Do we have numbers there yet? No, Senator, we don't. NCIS in the closed session, they may have more because they just got access to some more information, but right now we do not know. Senator Rounds, sir, if I can say yes, something sir. that you just talked about, one of the worst parts besides, you know, the victim or the survivor about this whole ordeal, if there are men in the Marine Corps that have served in the uniform or that feel that women are not supposed to be in the Marine Corps, they have absolutely captured a voice with this social media um, venue and, and denigrated women that are serving, that may want to serve, and those that have served, 
And they absolutely, if we don't get this right, they can absolutely drive women out of the Marine Corps and give women a reason not to want to serve with us. And that's why we must get at this. Because if there are men that exist in the Marine Corps outside that do not want women in the Marine Corps, this is absolutely a mouthpiece for them. And we would not allow them to have that voice. So in order to, to, to address specifically the actions that have occurred here, we have to make certain that we have within your ability to discipline clear and appropriate guidelines within the code that allow you to address the specific actions for people that are still in the military. But then we've also got to find a way to address the actions of those who were formerly in the military and who are no longer a part of it, but who are still displaying this type of, of uh, activity. Is that a fair statement? And we've got to be able to break it down into those two. Yes, sir, it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General Neller, would you agree that taking down a site is not going to solve this problem? I would agree with that, Senator. It's only a symptom. I think it's uh, really important that we recognize that this isn't a digital problem. It's not a social media problem. It's not Facebook's problem. Um, that that's a whack-a-mole approach. And we've tried it in the past. It doesn't work. This is a conduct problem. It's a criminal problem. And unfortunately, it's a cultural problem. And uh, you said in your opening testimony that it's your inclination to resist that description of cultural, but I think it, it's important to recognize that until we recognize that for what it is, this won't change. Now, this pattern of social media groups pasting pictures of female Marines without consent, uh, I've seen some pictures, uh, screenshots, glorifying horrible sexual violence. Um, it's happened before. I've got an article here from 2014. Uh, I won't share it with you because I don't want to share the Marine's name. But she said, uh, I was freaked out. I wouldn't even look at it at first. I have all of my social media set up so it's private. So I was really confused how in the world they got a photo of me. I was terrified of the comments I was going to be receiving. Um, and then subsequent comments were not only overtly sexual, but some threatened sexual violence. So you have asked for the trust of female Marines. You have asked for the trust of survivors. I just want to ask you, given that this has happened again and again, it's pervasive in the social media environment in particular, what would you say to those female Marines to demonstrate that Marine Corps leadership has earned that trust? That's why I'm asking them to trust me, because I, my ability to sit there and say, I've earned your trust, because we haven't gotten after this. I acknowledge that. But I can't get after it if they don't become part of the solution. And I know that's a, a big ask, because as you rightfully mentioned, if they're, if they're out there within these venues, there were, all the haters will be back there attacking them again tenfold. Yeah. And I think that's part of the problem. It's, uh, it's, it's the worst part of, of retribution and cyberbullying that if you make a comment, that you end up getting shouted down or threatened or all the hate. And I mean, it's going to come, I'm sure you deal with that. Maybe I know I'm going to deal with it. I've dealt with it. And I'm going to certainly deal with it after today. Big but part of that fine. problem, and you mentioned this, is anonymity. Are active duty Marines allowed to participate in social media uh, in that space anonymously? And have you looked at that issue that maybe the, the, the rights of active duty Marines in a social media environment might be different from just the general public? This is where it, it gets difficult, and we, I would ask that we get with the lawyers, because I'm not an attorney, but it becomes an issue of spree, free speech, sure. and as the secretary said, what is criminal and what is not? What is, what is a, a uh, 
What is a content? What is, what is consent what is, to a picture and what is yeah. not consent to a picture? But there are individuals out there, whatever, that, that put their name, um, uh, their unit, and there should be, there has to be accountability for that. So that's what I'm asking our, our women to help us with. Well, I would ask you um, to help us if there are specific changes to the UCMJ that you need to be able to address these sort of abusive behaviors, if there are specific changes to uh, statutory changes uh, for people who've already been discharged, um, we need to know what those potential tools are that we need to help you get ahead of this problem. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Uh, this is a sad day for the Marine Corps, and it's a sad day for our armed forces. Uh, all of us on this committee are agreed that the conduct at issue here was despicable, that we owe a sacred trust to the women and men who join our volunteer military and put it all on the line to keep us safe and to find themselves abused and victimized by fellow Marines is completely unacceptable. I appreciate you're addressing this issue with the seriousness that it deserves. And my question to each of you is twofold. How do we ensure that this never happens again? And what needs to happen so that those who violated the rights of their fellow Marines are held accountable? General? Senator, to ensure that it doesn't happen again, we've got to change the way we see each other as Marines. Um, and that's not going to be easy, but it's got to be done. Um, I don't know how many people we're dealing with here that are in here. Some of them, maybe they're just... Uh, they, whatever their beliefs are, they just happen to be piling on or they're just misguided or ignorant. Um, but if they're in this organization, they can't participate in this anymore. So for those, I, I, I honestly believe that with leadership out there and particularly the sergeant majors and the senior enlisted and the NCOs, this is where they, they're, they're the ones that have their finger on the, heart, the pulse of the organization. And I've got great trust in Marines. Um, I've seen what they can do. I know, I know their spirit. And I don't believe, I, I just, I may be wrong. Pray to God I'm not. But I, I don't believe this is indicative of the, of the great majority of the Marines that wear this uniform. So I'm, they're, they're going to they're gonna solve this. I can't do this myself, so our major can't do this. We've got to solve this together. Now, for those that don't want to be part of that solution, then there's got to be accountability. And we'll work our way through this, but there are, uh, there are uh, as we discussed, um, we've, got to clear, we've got to clarify for our leadership what their actions can be if this behavior is identified and what they can do to hold these people accountable. And we're looking at a whole number of things in addition so that's, that's our, our, our path forward. So we've got a training piece. It starts at the beginning, uh, but it's really a leadership piece, a discussion piece. But then at the end, there has to be accountability because, as Senator Graham said, there, there are those that will, through their, they understand what's right and what's wrong, and there's others they understand it, but they may feel like they have to do this. And then 
they're the ones that are going to have to be deterred or and held accountable. And Sergeant Major? Yes, sir. Um, so we have to build an environment. You know, if a Marine walked into any place, the Salvation Army, the Red Cross, and they already have an idea of what that organization does. They walk in there and they realize that where they're going, where the door that they walk through, they're not really doing what they what my thought was when I went in or what they advertise, then in real life, if they're doing something illegal, if they're doing something to, to denigrate, disrespect people, I'm going to report it. We have to build that environment in our Marine Corps where they go in this social media world and they really understand the meaning of friend. Because when you hit the button and you give somebody the right as a friend, that's not the same meaning as in I meet someone. And that's the reality of today and the virtual world. Just because you tag somebody as a friend, that doesn't mean you actually know that person. And that's not really your friend. Some people just learn that day, see people, tag them as a friend, let them in, not understanding in a social media world, everything on your page, you've just given them the right to. Because they can screenshot it, they can do what they want, take it and do what they want. And understanding the laws that we have right now today, that protects an individual. We have to explain that to our Marines, our leadership, and those that we recruit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we're here today to discuss Marines using social media to share intimate photographs of female service members and veterans without their consent. And it seems like every time we shut down one of these websites that a new one pops up. General Neller, I appreciated your strongly worded message last week, but we've already seen that at least one new website seems to have appeared in defiance of your guidance. We can keep playing digital whack-a-mole, but we'll keep losing until we have better tools to prosecute those who are responsible. So I want to go back to a question about the Uniform Code of Military Justice, but I want to ask it from a different perspective. General Neller, it's my understanding that if the original photo was taken consensually, the UCMJ may not allow for the strictest penalties under Article 120C, even if it was subsequently shared without consent. Is that accurate? Senator, my understanding is, as the Sergeant Major was discussing, if you're on a public-facing web page and you post a picture, that in, it, in itself can be construed as consent. And if someone else takes that picture that there is no criminal action. Well, and, and I just want to get this... I'm not saying I agree with that, but that's an, so, that is an interpretation. So let me ask this question. Many states have implemented laws that make so-called revenge pornography a criminal offense. Do you believe that we need a change like that to the UCMJ? I think that would be helpful in the accountability process. Um, but again, I'm not saying that not all these pictures, some of these pictures of these, fem of these women where they were fully clothed and it's the commentary and all that stuff. And that's where you get into the difficulty. But, but, but yes, I do agree. I do agree. Are, are photographs that were taken consensually and then someone else posted them or they were posted in a different context and then forwarded. That's correct. I, I know you are committed to pursuing this. But if we're going to shut down this conduct, then you ought to have every possible legal tool at your disposal. Now, I want to ask you a second question about this. Every Marine Corps base maintains a list of places that are off limits for service members. In 2013, one of your predecessors, General Amos, told Congress that the Marines were examining whether you could legally make certain websites off limits in the same way. You can't visit there any more than you can go into town and visit these particular places. What was the result of that assessment? And do you need additional authorities to be able to do that? Senator, I'm not aware, and I can I'll take that for the record, and we can do, may, maybe our, my SGA can talk to you about that, but I'm not aware that we ever, because of right or free speech and other things, ever placed a website off limits. We can, on a government com computer, we block certain websites, but when someone is on their individual device, 
um, I'm not aware that we said the following websites are off limits and to frequent these sites, if we were even able to determine if the Marine had, that we would, you would be a violation of a lawful order. I, I think this may be something that may be worth exploring again so that you have the maximum number of tools available to you to stop this behavior. Um, I have one more that I want to ask, and that is, General Neller, you're not the first commandant to attempt to address this issue, and in all due respect, it doesn't seem to be working. And I think it's because these social media scandals are symptoms of a much larger problem. It happens in the barracks, and it happens in the field, and it starts as early as basic training. Are you willing to reconsider the role that Marine recruit training plays in this and reevaluating the Marine Corps' policy of gender segregation at basic training? Senator, we're taking a very long look at how we do recruit training right now. I would not couch our recruit training as segregated, and I'd add, at this time, invite you down to see how we do what we do. Okay. We're not separating men and women anymore in the Marines? All recruits and all the services live separately because they live in open squad bays. And our training uh, is done by platoons, men and women in platoons. A good portion of the training as we do it now at Parasan, where all our women get trained, they do things with male recruits. The swimming tank, the rifle range, the crucible, the field training, even now, their final fitness exams. So to say that we're segregated, I don't believe is a fair statement, but we do do it differently than everybody else. That said, uh, it, it, we are looking at- Can I just in, clarify, General, because I just want to make sure I understand, and I'm past my time here, but I want to make sure I understand. Are you saying no activities are segregated other than sleeping, or are you saying that some activities are segregated and some are not? Some are and some are not. No, and we I, are and looking the question at, I'm asking we is are whether you want at, to take another look at We are looking at, at the entire way that we do recruit training for, from training, how we educate and train our drill instructors to how we do the entire program, program of instruction for men and women. I thank you, General. You know, service members who disrespect their fellow service members dishonor the service and dishonor our nation. And we've got to put an end to this conduct so none of us is here again. Thank you. General, um, I think there's two issues I want to talk about during my brief time here. Um, the first one is I want to make sure that you all respond to the point that has been made previously, but the idea that this had to be discovered by a journalist and not discovered by you. There's a fundamental flaw in oversight in terms of good order and discipline and conduct unbecoming if we are not ferreting out this kind of ugly, ugly representation of the marine ethos um, without journalists having to do it. So uh, I will look forward to a plan, and I'm going to ask uh, my colleagues to join me in a letter to Secretary Mattis, because I think this is something that needs to be done in all the services. What are you all doing internally um, to monitor online conduct that is related to active service members and how are you addressing that in terms of uh, not just the the vitriol that was on these sites but also um, cyber bullying that that could be impacting morale um, and I want to get to the bottom of that um, the second one is accountability now I'm going to tell you a brief story, and that is when I was the prosecutor in Kansas City, um, I wanted to do more on domestic violence, and the detectives came to me and they said, well, Senator, you have, I wasn't a senator then, prosecutor, you need to understand that many times the victim doesn't want to cooperate, and if we don't have a victim, we can't prosecute, and I said, well, let's shut down the homicide unit then, because we don't have victims in homicide, and we figure out a way to make the case. And I bring that up because for 134 and 133, conduct unbecoming and good order and discipline, it doesn't matter if the victims cooperate. If you can prove that this was an active Marine and they went online and said these things 
and referred to fellow Marines in this manner, then, I mean, the prosecutor in me tells me, you've got a prima facie case. And I know you can't comment on that because of undue influence, but I, I, I just want to point out that it's very important to understand that accountability is possible here, even if the survivors are not interested in coming forward to be quote unquote part of the case. Uh, could you acknowledge that, General? Senator, I understand your point. Um, that would though, again, no excuse, but it would require us to be out there. I mean, we, we surveil our network for people that are, are passing information. We look for malware, we do a lot of things. And that's why Major General Reynolds behind me, she's our MAR4 Cyber Commander. Our ability to look at all these potential websites where there is this kind of uh, nefarious, disgusting behavior, um, I mean, it, it kind of goes to the point of where there is a certain, where is the, the right of the Marine to expo express free speech and where does it go into an illegal act? Well, I get that. And so our ability to monitor that. So I, 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 we're I, having that discussion now, and, and I, I, I take your point. And I think it's really important, and we can talk about this in closed session more. It's not something that has to be in closed session, but NCIS is the one that I want to talk to about it. This is really, um, we have detectives all over this nation that are posing as bad guys online to catch horrible people that are trafficking children and doing other illegal activities. It would not be hard for someone to pose as an active Marine looking for a spot where they can see what these guys obviously were interested in looking at. Um, this is something that you could do on a random basis. And once it's known that that's out there, it is amazing the deterrent effect that that would have in terms of this being seen as acceptable. I also want to say that I think this accountability piece um, you know, there's crimes you can deter, and there's crimes you can't deter. I guarantee you, you, you throw some Marines out of the Marine Corps, you say you are no longer welcome here and you are dishonorably discharged for this behavior, you do that in a high-profile way, and obviously I don't want you to comment because I don't want to get into undue influence territory, but let me just say for the record, if you go after the active Marines that you have evidence on, and if they are dishonorably discharged, that will begin to send the signal that many of us up here are desperate for you to send. Um, it is, um, and then I, I would close, Mr. Chairman, just by pointing out that there has been some progress made. The 2014 SAPRO survey was cited by uh, Senator Gillibrand. I do want to say that in 2015, I want to say this for all the survivors out there, 77% of the survivors that were surveyed in 2015 recommended that other survivors come forward. So that is a positive that we are having that increase in numbers of survivors advising other survivors to come forward. And I wanted to get that publicly on the record today. So survivors out there in this incident hear that those who are coming forward who now have services and support available to them can expect um, a, a more positive experience as, they, as we all try to hold these jerks accountable. And jerk is a kind word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Casco has her usual reticence. I thank you for your passion. I thank you for your involvement in this issue for many years. And many of us do appreciate your commitment, Senator McCaskill. Thank you. Senator Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have to uh, agree uh, with uh, my colleagues up here that today is uh, indeed a very sad day uh, for the Marine Corps and for our, our services. Uh, we're without question, disgusting, uh, absolutely reprehensible behavior that needs uh, to be aggressively dealt with, uh, and it has to be dealt with immediately. And, uh, and I know, General Neller, you know the entire country is, uh, is watching uh, today, and uh, although I appreciate your strong words, I know that you know uh, that we also need strong action, that words will not be enough. We're going to need to immediately take action, and my experience with you, I know that that's the type of leader you are, and uh, we'll be uh, working with you 
in any way that we can uh, to be helpful to you. My colleagues have, have made some very important points regarding uh, the culture uh, in the Marine Corps. And I want to build on that and specifically talk a little bit about uh, recruit training, which has been brought up, particularly, though, at uh, Paris Island. Uh, as all of the uh, witnesses here know, uh, Marine Corps recruits from the eastern half of the United States, including my state of Michigan, as well as all female recruits attend basic training at Paris Island in South Carolina. And without question, uh, basic training is, uh, is the place where the Marine Corps instills its core values. And a Marine is always a Marine, so those are values that stay with that uh, individual for their entire life. Last year, the Marine Corps completed three command level investigations into hazing and abuse of recruits and even hazing among drill instructors at Paris Island. Allegations include the targeted hazing of recruits for their ethnic background or religious beliefs, including a Muslim recruit who was placed in an industrial clothes dryer multiple times. A separate Muslim recruit from my state of Michigan died at Paris Island by jumping over a stairwell after enduring abuse by the Marines entrusted to train him. The command investigation into the recruit's death found uh, that, quote, maltreatment by his drill instructor team, leadership failures at multiple levels of command, and administrative and process failures contributed to his death. The investigation also found a senior drill instructor at Paris Island taught subordinate drill instructors to, quote, hate recruits, end of quote, in order to train them. And I'm very concerned that uh, the poor practices uh, in the training of Marine recruits uh, at Paris Island as a result of some of these instances may have uh, contributed to some of the inexcusable behavior that we're discussing uh, today. As you know, General uh, Neller, respect is a fundamental core value, respect for every aspect of that in individual. So I know you have referenced a comprehensive review of recruit training, but could you uh, get, let the panel know uh, what will the scope of this review be uh, how will it be conducted, and uh, has it already resulted in some corrective actions uh, uh, in recruit training at Paris Island? Well, Senator, after the investigation, we sat down and went through and looked at what was going on at recruit training, and what we found was that we had rules and regulations, but there was a failure in leadership and in supervision. So we've done a number of things to clarify what the rules were, what they weren't. Uh, we've increased the supervision at the recruit depots and by increasing the number of officers. We've gone back to look at how we train our drill instructors. Um, there were some practices that had crept in over time that were not in, in compliance with the orders. There were a number of officers uh, to include uh, battalion and regimental commander who were relieved due to their inability to maintain good order and discipline and follow the rules and regulations. Uh, the individuals that you mentioned, and plus others, were, are in the process of uh, going through the military justice system, and I'll leave it at that. And you, will, uh, you probably will have read or hear about where they are within that process uh, in the next few weeks. So with this, and I hate to say that um, this provided an opportunity, but again, to look back at, okay, so how does this, this thing doesn't happen here, it starts somewhere. And so we are in the process, and we're already in the process of going back and talking to drill instructors about what it is to lead, what it is to, be, to coach, teach, mentor. Um, we've got a number of things we're looking at, and we've already implemented as far as changing the attitude um, the commanding generals that are there at both San Diego and Paris Island are all in with this. Um, they understand what we're trying to do, um, and I think they're making progress. Um, but we have to prove that we've changed. So I agree with you that part of this, uh, part of what has to change at, at, at the recruit training and at officer candidate school is a discussion of how we view each other as Marines. Re whatever, our, our race, our gender, whatever. And because that's where you learn what right looks like. And so we're in the middle of that. Uh, I believe we have a plan. It's not going to change overnight, but it's going to change. Uh, I'm confident of that. And we will correct this. Um, and if there are others uh, that don't want to follow the rules, um, they'll be held accountable. 
So I, I believe we're, we're headed in the right direction there. But again, you want to see results? I'm responsible to give you those results. And it's not going to happen overnight. But again, I would ask and invite you to come down to see what we do at Paris Island or San Diego and see some of your Michigan Marines. Because I believe we've got it. We're on the right path. Thank you, General. Secretary Stackley, thank you for your appearance uh, today. And thank you for your input as we recognize the civilian stewardship of our military. Sergeant Major Green, uh, you're probably, your leadership is probably now more necessary than most times in the past as we repair the damage that has been done and to put in the proper perspective that this is a terrible thing. And from time to time, these things have happened. But at the same time, we recognize the United States Marine Corps and their service and sacrifice that is going on today as we speak. And we don't want to ever diminish that service and sacrifice that they have made. General Nelly, you're, Neller, you came before this committee with candor. We are now, I believe, embarked, thanks to your testimony and your commitment, on, what may, on an effort that may take a long time. But I think this hearing was an important beginning to fixing a problem that apparently has been out there for some period of time. I believe you're facing it head on. And the one request I have from this committee is that you keep us informed, not only the progress that you make, but in the challenges that you face. Because we are looking at a new form of communication amongst our citizens, and it's called the Internet. And as I mentioned in my opening statement, it's provided knowledge and information in a way that's never been available before. There's also a dark side. And we're looking at the dark side today. And we're going to look forward to you and Secretary Stackley's recommendations, if it's necessary, to pass additional legislation. We cherish the right of all citizens to have a right of privacy. But I think when we're seeing this kind of outrageous and offensive behavior, then we need to provide some protection to our fellow citizens and those who have served our country with honorable with honor because when we when we do something like this we harm the reputation of all a few have done that and it's our obligation to try to see that this kind of thing is not repeated senator reed uh, Mr. Chairman, I simply uh, want to concur and thank you for holding this hearing. It's been very important, and it will be a foundation for further work, uh, both by the, all the military services, not just the Marine Corps, all the military services, and this Congress to get it right. We will meet in 10 minutes in Russell 220 to continue this conversation in classified setting. Thank you. So the armed services.